Hey guys, I'm Andrew McComb and welcome to Web3 TV. In today's video, I'm with Jeff Bogensberger, founder and CEO of the Laughing Otter DAO. And we're going to discuss the more commonly asked questions about Web3 technology and how it can help people create a community that makes a social impact. But before we do, make sure you register to watch every episode of Web3 TV here, where we share inspiring stories of all things Web3 making a difference to the world. All sorted? Okay, let's go and meet Jeff. Jeff, welcome to Web3 TV. Thanks for having me. Jeff, we get asked a question quite regularly, especially for our community builders, is how does Web3 help you, in particular your case, the Laughing Otter, build a community and make a social impact better than the options that are currently available? Oh, that's, that, that's a great question. Um, I, I think probably I, I'll give the example of um, when I started the Laughing Otter, the, the vision hasn't changed significantly, but for the first six months to a year, using traditional uh, uh, social media channels and um, to try to get traffic to the website was really tough and, it, and, and expensive, to be honest, um, with very limited results. And then about a year or so ago, I heard about um, DAOs and Web3 and blockchain and all the excitement that was happening. And what I found significantly different is it's not um, it's not so much about the technology. It, it's about this community. And when I say community, I'm talking hundreds of millions of people who are open and believe that there's a, a, an opportunity for Web3 and blockchain to have a, a disruption in the world. And the, this openness to collaborate and to, to communicate um, is, that just doesn't exist anywhere else. In, in, in 20 some odd years of business, I've never found it so easy to break down doors and to, and to talk to people. Um, it, there, there's something beautiful happening here and it's got nothing to do with currency speculation, NFTs, um, and decentralized finance, or maybe it has a little bit to do with that. Something um, more beautiful happening, and, and it's that ability and openness to connect that's fantastic. I, I was explaining what's going on the other day, um, and to me, Web3 feels more, or, Web3 has as much opportunity for historical significance as the anti-war civil rights movements of the 60s because and because in the same vein there's a, hundreds of millions of people who are frustrated and are looking for reasons to connect and that has allowed me and the laughing otter to really to flourish uh, because of the openness of conversation that that's what's exciting about this this space so for a viewer who's new to web3 what is it like what's your take on it i guess from a technical sense and then a then an actual values based sense right okay so from a from a technical sense it's the i guess the the definition just real quick is Web one was basically flat websites that with a lot, with very little interaction, um, in the days of the screaming router and uh, pages loading um, four or five minutes. Web two was the inception of more, um, the kind of the, the, it was during the dot com phase where um, companies like Facebook, Twitter, Expedia, Amazon, those kind of companies that had interactions and you could you could do things uh, happened. Now we're coming into Web three and through the use of blockchain technology, uh, there's this move to to decentralizing information. In Web two, a lot of big companies like Google and Amazon and Facebook emerged, but they 
they house all the data and they control it all. The Web3 is attempting to move that data back to the individual and back to the user ownership. Um, and then there's, there's things like uh, decentralizing finance and insurance and, um, and other large uh, monolithic institutions and trying to break those down to make it more fair for, um, for the individual. So that, that from a technical side of it is really where, where Web3 is. But to me, who's, I'm, I've never really, like I've been around technology my whole life, but I've always been on the customer facing side of things or in the leadership roles. So I'm not, I'm not um, a coder, uh, but I know enough to keep coders honest, uh, but I, I'm not a coder. And, I'm, and I don't get super excited about technology in and of itself. What I get excited about is how technology and the emotions that get created because of that technology and the possibilities. And that, like I was saying earlier, is the really, really exciting part of Web3. The hundreds of millions of people that just believe we can change the world. And the conversations that they're having, um, it's... It's a fascinating place to be, and that's 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 more why I, the Laughing Otter got involved in uh, in Web three than the technology. Although the technology is amazing, and there's some incredibly intelligent people driving that. Um, to me, it's the conversations I get to have every day with people who are just optimistic about the future of the world and where it can be, and and supporting um, the individual. Yeah, so bringing a bit of power back to the individual. Obviously, Web3, a bit more transparency, a bit more fairness from what I'm hearing, from what you described. Yeah, there's all of that. And even, even, and even if Web3 isn't the solution, the fact that we're having conversations around how unfair some of these institutions and, and processes are well, maybe Web3 won't be the reason or the way that they get solved or, or improved, but the conversations will lead to other solutions and other conversations. And, um, and that's important. And just, just like, you know, a lot of the conversations that happened in the 60s uh, while sitting around listening to John Lennon and uh, Bob Dylan, um, they still resonate to today. Um, about to get a visitor here, or my cat's about to walk across my keyboard. Um, the but those those conversations maybe they didn't solve any, everything, but the anti-war se sentiment, the 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 civil rights movement, um, the uh, protecting the environment, the freedom of choice, all of those conversations that happened in the sixties they're resu resulting in outcomes that are happening today. And it's the same thing happening with web three that, um, you know, like everything that's happened with, uh, with FPX and like there, there are serious conversations happening now with like the, the investment community, like what, what is driving that and, and Wall Street and all of these these things and, and investment bankers and like they're important and they, I don't want to discredit the importance of being able to fund things, but we need to look harder at okay what are, what are the motivations behind how things are funded and but these are conversations that are happening and maybe it's not Web three that solved it in in completely or not even at all. But it's the importance of those conversations that um, will lead to outcomes. And what does a community or a successful community look like in the Web3 space? Uh, I, I think for, from my perspective, it would be, um, and the, the community I have so far it would, would tick these boxes, it's an emotionally committed group of people who believe in what you're doing. Um, I, I like you, you see, um, I, I would, uh, I think a successful community 
is it's not unique to Web three. You know, everything from um, well, I think you're, you're you're from New Zealand. Um, everything from all black fans to Harley Davidson riders to Budweiser drinkers have an emotional attachment to a brand. And if they're emotionally attached and they communicate and they, and they, they, uh, they talk about the merits of that brand. Well, then that's, that's a successful community. It's, um, it's, it's that emotional connection and engagement that, um, is the, uh, how is, the how is that Jeff different to now? Like, isn't that happening now? Like what, why is it going to be better in web three? I don't believe, I don't believe it is. I, I think it's just, uh, I don't think that's any different. It's just web three just happens to, uh, right now be hundreds of millions of people who are open to being part of a community who love having conversations, who get together at meetups and at events and talk about change and how we can do things. Um, so th- there's, it's almost like Web3 is a community in and of itself that's super excited. And then you got subcategories of those, uh, of that community with all the projects that are going on. Um, you know, I, I guess that'd be, uh, uh, the same if, if you're a Harley Davidson rider, you're a fan of Harley Davidson, but then you might be a part of your local Harley Davidson club in your in your hometown, and that has its own level of emotion. And I think that's what's happening in Web three. I don't I don't think I, 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 Web three is awesome, uh, but it doesn't remove human behavior. Like it's still people people want to be emotionally connected to things. And whether that's Web3 or, or not, that, that doesn't change. And who's going to benefit the most, do you think, by creating a Web3 community? Is it brands? Is it um, causes? What are your thoughts on that? All of the above. I think humanity. No, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, deflecting that question. I, 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 I think I've, I've, I've said this before. I think Web3 has the potential of of being a historical uh, point in time that is the catalyst for um, for positive change on a global scale for years to come, and I I think that's good. And and as brands and communities and projects and and users and token holders, as we start to evolve, I think that'll become more and more clear. Very cool. And so how can the a Web3 community make a social impact? Um, well, the, 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 just, it's really not that different than being involved. Like if you're um, an active member in the community, when you, whether you volunteer or do any, like the, the important thing that we got to get away from, um, and this is not to, uh, be derogatory or anything like that. It's posting a message on Facebook does nothing. Like saying, you know, posting a picture on Black Lives Matter Facebook, but then go to work and you don't speak up that um, when you hear racist comments being made in your in your workforce. Um, what needs to happen is if you believe that we can be better and we can be doing things in a more positive way, then get involved. And that that has a, that's not Web three. That's not Web two. That's nothing. That's hu- that's being human. Get involved. Do things. Don't just talk about things. And that's um, and 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 I was the biggest. Uh, I was guilty of that for fifty years, and now. In the last third of my life, I've taken all this emotion and frustration with in certain aspects of society, and uh, and I'm trying to do something about it. So, get involved with projects that you believe in, support them, uh, both through activities, through voice, and through well, I guess financially as well, if if you if you can. 
and I guess the power of the group, right? If you're in a like-minded group that all, you know, has the same cause, they're going to all support each other at the same time. Yeah, and, it, and Greta Thunberg did more for climate change in what, about five years than um, the UN and other global organizations have done in 30. And that's because she was able to rally emotion and if you rally emotion, then change happens. And it, and it always, 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 100% of the time, comes bottom up. It never, ever comes top down. And it doesn't matter what country you're in, positive change has never come from leadership. Um, and maybe there's a, there are a handful of exceptions through the 5,000 years of civilization, but even then, um, if you scratch the surface, it was because of the, the, the noise of the populace that makes a difference. I, I would love to see the Laughing Otter have that level, have the, the, that level of impact on mental health and the lives of children that um, Greta Thunberg did for climate change. That, that would be, I, I, I don't think I'd stop smiling. Yeah, yeah. So, guys, if you're interested in uh, social communities, maybe building one for yourself in Web3 with the amazing tools that are available, um, myself and Jeff are going to, we're going to create another video for you. I'll put a link for you here that is probably, or let's call it some more frequently asked questions to, 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 to support that journey for you. So, Jeff, thank you so much for sharing uh, your wisdom today. We'll see you in the next video. All right. Sounds good. Look forward to it. Well, there it is, guys. I hope you enjoyed this Web3 TV episode. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. And remember, if you'd like to watch every episode of Web3 TV, visit the link below or subscribe to our channel. And remember to hit the bell icon so that we can notify you every time a new episode is released. I'm Andrew McComb, and I look forward to sharing more inspiring Web3 TV episodes making a difference to the world. I'll see you soon.